Hey. So, uh, denial. I <laughs> just, you know, the, the topic comes up so strong for me today. And, and uh, I guess because I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the topic. I've, I've also lived in denial a good portion of my life, you know, most of it. Um, <clears throat> attached, so attached to my story of who I think I am, you know, the, um, the, the, the small David, you know, the small self and uh, uh, full of fear and pride arrogance, you know, and uh, um, I'll do it my way and, and kind of a attitude, you know, and, and but I, uh, I refer to uh, uh, the big book in, in, uh, the, in the program of Alcoholics Anonymous sometimes and, and uh, you know, the promises tell us that we can live happy, joyous and free. And it doesn't matter what we own, <laughs> right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter who we're living with or all of those things. We can have this happy, joyous, and free, you know, this living in the fourth dimension of existence, you know, in a tent <laughs> by the river. doesn't matter, you know, but we're so attached to this idea that, that we must have things Things are what make the difference, you know, and uh, um, <laughs> and, it, and it isn't things. So if we let go of that idea, if we let go of that uh, uh, that idea of things, it's so, um, yeah, anyway. So when I look around me, uh, I have a story that, uh, you know, in the, uh, I worked for a while in the local treatment center here, and one of the young fellows that I met not, not that long ago, um, went home um, in the last week and, and he was out of the treatment center one day and he died of an overdose. And, and uh, um, you know, wow, it, it's just like, what, what could he, what did he not get? You know, we hang on to our old story of not good enough. His story, he had a story of trauma for sure. Yes, he did. You know, but we can't blame it on the story. We can't say, well, it was just too much for him. I mean, maybe it seems that way, but it, uh, anyway, we lose our way. We've all come here and on this planet and, and, uh, and, and we have this birthright. We really do. I believe it's a birthright to live here in, in, in joy. You know, uh, why can somebody live in, in an amazing, joyful life and somebody else doesn't? You know, and, and uh, um, I, you know, I figured it out, but I didn't really figure it out. It, it was shown to me by so many people and so many teachers that finally it just kind of, <clears throat> it just came through. It was, and then the silliness of not being able to see it dawns on me. It's like, oh, how could I have not seen that? That I was trapped in my thoughts, trapped in my beliefs. You know, and that, uh, you know, and, and really strongly conditioned that if I just got more information, I would be able to figure life out. If I just got, you know, uh, somehow pressured myself more, worked harder. And, and it, it isn't about working harder. It, it isn't about, you know, more knowledge in a way. It just, if we can just surrender in the moment and say, okay, I, I get that there's something else going on here outside of me in a way it's not really outside of me because it's we're in it but it's a some there is a power greater than me there is a um, more than just a purpose there we're we're part of something greater you know uh, maybe you call it love you could call it love we exist in this sea of love and and yet in because we're in our kind of our crazy minds, I like to call it my crazy mind, you know, it's always judging and, and you know, conniving in a way and seem, you know, afraid that we're going to lose something or not get something or that we're going to be alone. Wow, gosh, being alone is pretty amazing, you know, and, and, and even when we're with somebody, it, 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 we, it's those moments alone where we, where we realize who we are, 
in and uh, that we're not our story we're not our our name we're not you know a man or a woman it's all just part of the of the of this adventure you know and uh, we existed before the body and we exist after the body and it's hard you know to imagine that we're you know because our conditioning has kind of told us else uh, uh, otherwise so this is the deal if 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 you know our interest is happy joyous and free right you, if you like to be free, free of anger, free of doubt, free of fear. You know, it's possible. Like, it's so simple. <laughs> so that's my message today. Freedom is available. It really is. So sit quietly, you know, become a student if that's, you know, a, but a student of the, of the, we'll call them the spiritual teachings because that's what we call them, but it's really just a name, you know, student of life, but, but not necessarily like an engineer, uh, you know, not like, or, or a doctor, uh, not, not a student of, of uh, although it's fine to be any, whatever that you want to be, don't take it too serious, that's all. You know, it's fine if you want to have a doctorate or in something, as long as it doesn't keep you from uh, awakening to the moment, to what is now. And, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, it's available for everyone. If I could, if it could happen to me, and you know, I mean, I'm a guy who, you know, was a full blown alcoholic by the time he was 13 or 14, you know, um, full of attitude, oh, scared to death most of my life, you know, didn't go to school, uh, you know, hitchhiking around the country. Um, you know, as a kid in the drug business, you know, just, uh, I mean, this is a long time ago, right? But, but you know, I just, I, I was not uh, on a good path, fighting and, and uh, you know, in and out of different jails. And, you know, I had this idea in my, that I would never live past 18 or 21 or 25. I had this thought that when I went to jail, if I, when I, I was eventually going to get big time, you know, and, and I'd learned to play the guitar, get in shape, and write a book. <laughs> anyway, and life had other plans. So, you know, um, my prayer, though, for all of my recovery, and even before I sobered up at, at 25, and, you know, and started, became kind of an officially a spiritual student at 25, if you will, but I, even though I didn't know it, um, but my prayer even before that was to be shown. You know, show me the big picture. Show me the big picture. I know there is a big picture, you know. And, and I know, you know, I realized I was like, you know, kind of like an ant, unable to see the hill. And, and, uh, um, and but my prayer was to see, you know, the 50,000 foot view. And so I encourage you to ask, you know, there, there, there is powers in the universe and, and they, they hear our prayers. And uh, so uh, I encourage you to ask, to be shown, to see the whole picture. And, and uh, um, you know, and there's lots of people who have given us lots of, of uh, cues, lots of direction in this. I've been listening to Muji a lot the last year or so. And Muji just lays it out so simply, how to step out of the story into beyond the mind, beyond thought. Now we're still here, and, and still thought's still available, but we don't take it so seriously, and we don't get caught up in it, and it doesn't bring up emotion for us, right? So it's all, it's available, but you can live beyond thought, and, and so thought then, and mind then becomes your servant, not the master. Yes, so, but denial says, you know, fear says uh, we don't dare, we can't. You know, and pride says that we don't have to. Well, why would we deny ourselves, you know, the, the joys of this life to stay in the struggle, to stay in, in, in fear and confusion? And uh, so it doesn't matter our circumstances. We can be anywhere uh, at peace, anywhere, in any situation. So that's, uh, that's my message today. And uh, so... Um, it's a little late today. I, I went for a long motorcycle ride today and uh, my face, I got my face burnt. 
then I come back and a couple hours ago and just f uh, fell asleep. I was like, wow. And, and, uh, but, uh, we have, it was, uh, what are we? The 17th of April. So anyway, so better late than never. We've been doing this reading, uh, every day. I'm kind of uh, excited about this. So every day since the 1st of May last year. And, uh, so we're coming up really soon, uh, having done a full year of this, and I think we're going to do something else. Um, you know, I enjoy carrying a message, and I've been looking at this book as a possibility. It's called The uh, Daily Reflections, and, uh, but, um, yeah, we'll see. What do you guys think? Daily Reflections? Yes. Yeah. Oh, another thing I wanted to ask. Um, I'm looking at doing a uh, like a residential three or four day uh, study group, a big book study group. In a, uh, I found a place here in southern Alberta where uh, first September, let's say. So, uh, like your thoughts on that, your input on that. If anybody's interested in like a, a three or four day, quite intense study group with meditation and you know, and also probably some physical. Uh, you know, all the things that, that many of us do that are our practices on a daily basis. So not just studying the book, but we'll, we'll really brush up on the practices. Uh, if you're interested, just maybe leave a note, see, you know, and, and uh, see if it, if it wants to happen. Um, okay, April 17th. Thought for the day from this little book called the 24-Hour Day Book. And uh, 24 hours a day in 1954. So the language is a little old. But it's a great little book. It's a kind of a, uh, um, you know, been there for many of us for many years. Millions of copies of this has been printed. It says, every time we go to a meeting, a 12-step meeting, an AA meeting, every time we say the Lord's Prayer. Now, in lots of meetings, they used to say the Lord's Prayer. We don't do that so much anymore. And, uh, um, you know, some meetings still do. But uh, for the most part, uh, the 12 steps in the AA are very non-denominational. So the prayer we often say is a serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's often the prayer we say in, in uh, you know, at meetings. Every time we have a quiet time before breakfast, we're paying a premium on our insurance against taking that, that next drink or having that next emotional slip. You know, every time we connect with you know, or with intention to that universal power, to consciousness. You know, it's, a, it's another kind of nail in the building that we're building called freedom. We're paying a premium on the insurance against taking that first drink. Every time we help another alcoholic or another addict, we're making a large payment on our drink insurance. We're making sure that our policy doesn't lapse. I like his analogy. And my building says in, up an endowment in serenity, peace, and happiness that will put me on easy street for the rest of my life. Easy street is happy, joyous, and free. Yes. There are many ways to build that bridge. Meditation for the day. I gain faith by my own experience of God's power in my life. The constant, persistent recognition of God's spirit in all my personal relationships. The ever-accumulating what weight of evidence in support of God's guidance, the numberless instances in which seeming chance or wonderful coincidence can be traced to God's purpose in my life. Let me read that again. The ever accumulating weight of evidence in support of God's guidance, the numberless instances in which see, uh, seeming chance or wonderful coincidence can be traced to God's purpose in my life. All these things gradually engender a feeling of wonder, humility, and gratitude to God, to universal intelligence. These, in turn, are followed by a more sure and abiding faith in God, in the moment, and in love, and His purpose. Prayer for the day. I pray that my faith may be strengthened every day. Yes, I pray that I may find confirmation in of my faith in the good things that have come into my life. And you know, good or bad, always now I recognize who's to say. 
not my judgment for sure. So let's all imagine that everything, absolutely everything is for us. Nothing is ever against us. There is no such thing. Life is for us and everything in it. So one of the things that, you know, I've been sharing over and over again every day, we do a, a little meditation and, and uh, three minutes, really, I put up five, three minutes, right? <laughs> three minutes. So we're just going to take this short, like I say, very short minute or two and sit. So come with me. Just, you know, if you're in a safe place, I mean, not driving, and uh, you can just close your eyes. And we're going to drop into this space and practicing this every day helps us to find this stillness inside of us. This, you know, the doorway, if you will, into this experience of oneness is inside. It feels like it's inside. But when we really get inside, it opens the door to all things. We pass through that doorway into stillness and what's there is everything and nothing all at once. But, so we'll just drop in, we'll sit quietly. Just come into your breath. As close to your breath as you can be. Really focus, be with each breath. here now quietly doorway to peace to bliss to understanding beyond anything we could have imagined with our intellect is in this breath in this moment allow your body to relax if your mind is running with thoughts just gently let them go you can even tell them that it's okay we'll be back in a minute and watch our thoughts because our thoughts are not us we are not our thoughts Feel the absolute stillness. In that stillness, there's no separation, no distance, no time. No thought of the morrow, no thought of the past. Just feel free to stay here as long as you like. Know that I love you, that you are love, that you are worthy of love. No matter what we've done or haven't done, what we think or haven't thought, we are that love. Nothing is missing. Everything is for us. Thank you. Stay in this space as long as you want. Love you.